Joan. It's so and Hidden Meanings Conference Center, Village Green Shopping Center, Route 9. You know, we've been spending a lot of time talking about, uh, over the last weeks and months, Pakal Votan and his uh, prophecy about the culmination of the end of this era, as we know it, on December the 21st, 2012. And when, when I left, they were having some... Uh, trouble with the economy, and I, you know, I said, you know, this, uh, this could be, you know, be interesting. Well, by the time we got back, this is a catastrophe of the highest sort, beyond anybody's comprehension. Bank failures, the government is socializing the financial industry. It's funny, you know, they're against... Uh, me, uh, social medicine, but they don't have any trouble with uh, social Wall Street, you know. But everything is, is, is now reached the point that, you know, it, it makes no difference to me what anybody else thinks, and I'm not trying to get you or anybody else to think, but I am convinced by looking at this that this has to be connected to what Votan It has to be. I mean, because... You know, just three years before 2012, about, and we are in the middle of a, not a American catastrophe, but a worldwide catastrophe. I mean, it's beyond anybody's ideas that anything like this could happen. If you remember when I last was here, I showed you a picture of Wall Street, and, um, that's right. And here it is. And then I interspersed with it this next picture, and it took on a very uh, interesting thing for me. And so I, I put it on the website. That's Pakal Votan. And he said that at this time, our obsession with materialist values would cause a collapse and a total change into a new era, a new age, a new way of thinking. And, you know, right now, the panic is so amazing that even those on Wall Street that really hardly know what to think. For the most part, people, including the president and the Congress and all these people and the big shots from around the world, what they're trying to do is restore things to the way they were, you see. But if this statement of Votan's and, and, and the Buddha as well is correct, and I, I know it is, I, I have no doubt by looking at this. If I told you initially about the, the December 21st, 2012 prophecy, and you came to me and said, oh, well, do you think anything's going to happen? But look what has happened. I mean, the economic status of the world is in meltdown. It, it, it's, it's just totally amazing. So it's convinced me. But a lot of people are trying to get things back the way they were. Well, you can't, you're not going to do that. In the first place in this country, you, got, you now have a, a nationalized economy to a great extent. But not many people are prepared to accept the fact that what was is not going to be what is. The collapse, in my humble opinion, is programmed. It will work its way into an entirely new social process. In other words, it's, it's an evolution. It's in the way things evolve. The collapse... You know, I thought it's kind of it's like pulling the top off of a pressure cooker. Um, the food won't be cooked, but the steam and the pressure will dissipate, and the area around the cooker will cool down, and ways will be found to cook the stuff in a different way. And that's basically what's happened here. You know, the society that we live in in, in this country is a hardcore capitalist 
conservative society that was a free market society. Um, private enterprise worked unregulated, and the, and the government dared not interfere. And, you know, that would be socialism. We don't want, we want small. This was the thing. When, when this current administration came into office, they said, we want small government. Well, never would they ever consider interfering or regulating these people. And the reason that they wouldn't is because these people contributed millions and millions and millions of dollars to campaigns. So here we've gone from that, a uh, hardcore capitalist conservative society to a socialist economic society where the government is taking over everything. And you know the funny thing? Nobody had to do anything. I mean, nobody, Congress didn't have to meet. The kings didn't have to meet. Uh, nobody had to say, well, do you think we should do this? It was done for them. It was just done. And they had no choice. And that's the way this worked. You know, you remember <coughs> when the Soviet Union collapsed almost overnight? Well, what's the difference between what happened there and what's happening here? So all we can do now is wait, and most importantly, watch. And that's what Jesus in the Bible said in Mark 13, 37. He said, what I say to you, I say to all, watch. But what he was driving at was you have got to consider yourself, you've got to consider that your mind has been inundated with debris from all of these people trying to either sell you something, loan you something, charge you something, interest this. And he says, you've got to turn inside of yourself and let the light that is from above start to cleanse all of this stuff and set your mind off in a different direction. And, and you know, the, the point is, <coughs> you have to do that. Because just like happening it it you know nobody planned it nobody met about it uh, there was no government that could say no we don't we don't we're not going to do that it it's over it was done and this is where you have to fit in here so you can say well i don't know if i so you can say you don't know but my god if ever you saw anything you've gone to church <coughs> you've gone to church all of your life many people have and you've talked about the prophets, and you've never seen one doggone thing fulfilled anywhere. Admit it. But we told you about this guy, Pakal Votan, and that something was going to happen right now, and bang, you're seeing it. Front row seat. And so what we're seeing now happening before our eyes is something that really has never happened before. Oh, you know, we had a depression and all that stuff, but this is a worldwide meltdown. Well, what makes it so doubly amazing is that it comes right exactly at the time that Pakal Votan predicted it, and the Buddha predicted it as well. And so we're right in the end time prophecy of Pakal, Votan, and Buddha. And the entire world, I mean, honestly, the entire world is literally falling apart right before your eyes. Right before you watch it. You can watch it on television. Everything falling apart. Now, <clears throat> when we look at the, the basis of the prophecy that Pakal, Votan made in 600 AD, what was it? He spoke of the closing of this world age cycle on December the 21st, 2012. As this date approaches, we are collectively in a transition phase of the old world dying and a new world being born. Wow. The old world dying and the new world being born a new and completely different world. And when you look at the headlines, such as the one that I'm going to show you now from the Washington Post, you have to stop and just think for a minute. 
When you see something like you're going to see now from the Washington Post, <coughs> you have to really start putting your doubts behind you. You never thought you would live to see a headline like this. The End of American Capitalism. Washington Post, the worst financial crisis since the Great Depression is claiming another casualty, American-style capitalism. Isn't that amazing? I mean, it's like a hurricane. You, you, you just have to, you know, get inside and, and pull a roof over your head and hope for the best. It's just happening. But you never, you never, even the days that we first started talking about Paco Votan, I myself never even dreamed, and that was only a few weeks ago, that we would ever see anything like that. But you do. That you do. <coughs> so, we're seeing it, and we're closing in on December the 21st, 2012, and you're going to see other statements that will equally shock you. The United States right now is doing what they did in Russia and what Hugo Chavez does in Venezuela. They are bringing socialism to the banking and mortgage industry. In fact, did you, I don't know if you saw this, Hugo Chavez welcomed brother George Bush as a comrade in the socialist movement. Did, it's amazing. But he did, because he said, that's the way, George, that's the way I do it. You're doing the same thing. <laughs> Take over everything to help. And I mean, it's, but still, gnawing underground is this Pakal Votan, December 21st, 2012. See, before you could, you could sit and you, or you'd come up and you'd say to me, well, what do you think's going to happen? You, don't, you can't even say that anymore. What do you think's going to happen? Because it's happening. It's happening. So the question then is, high-ranking officials all over the world are trying to head off a complete meltdown because it will spread its tentacles into everything. The question is, will the material minds that are working feverishly to head off this meltdown institute a change from the need for funds for violence to funds for help and compassion. But that's not what they're looking at. And you even have people in that Wall Street thing who are trying to get this down lower and lower and lower so they can get in there and buy this stuff dirt cheap. The Buddha <coughs> spoke 2,500 years ago about this coming time right now. He called it the latter day. He said that the collapse of life as we know it would occur in 2,500 years. And he said that 2,500 years ago. It's brought the time to now. When you, when you place the words of Buddha together with the words of Votan, it becomes very interesting. Buddha Votan. Buddha said, in the latter day of the law, people lose their desire for enlightenment and are increasingly at the mercy of their greed, anger, and stupidity. The three poisons. And Votan foretold of our accelerated technological society and the resulting damage of our collective divergence from natural law in exchange for materialist values. <coughs> so they're both saying the same thing. And, and this is really what happened. I mean, you can talk, you know, I, I see a lot of people, oh, well, they're blaming it on these poor people. They shouldn't have gone and got these mortgages that they couldn't afford. Come on. It's all swindle. They were sold to you. Hey, you want a house? Don't worry, you're not to pay anything. Just move right in. And then they're selling mortgages around and making bundles of money. Out. But look at the Buddha's words. You could say about these people, uh, I don't know, if, did you hear about this guy from Lehman Brothers? 
I mean, you know, he was the head of Lehman Brothers, and they collapsed. He walked away with $400 million. And he went down to Washington, and he spoke to the Congress. And after he got done, he went over to a um, health spa. And he uh, was on the treadmill, and some guy come up and smacked him right in the nose. Yeah? Yeah, it happened. So you can, you can attribute the words of Buddha to these kind of people. Greed, anger, <coughs> and stupidity. Although, you know, they're not quite stupid. They know what they're doing. They're very sharp. <laughs> but what that word anger does and how it fits in is because it has caused a tremendous anger throughout the world. And Wotan's words predicted a serious problem for all life on this planet because of our collective diversions from natural law in exchange for the material things. You know, what do we do? We black top and cement everything in sight. You know, if you've got a Walmart down here and you've got a Walmart over there, let's put another one over here. I'd blacktop everything, rip down the trees, and that's what we do. You see, and, 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 it, and it has its repercussions. But you're getting to the point where they can't do that anymore. See, what I've told you this for years, that nature intervenes and says, uh-uh. That's as far as you're going, because you continue on this path, you're going to destroy the planet. You're going to destroy me. You're going to destroy nature. So we allow businesses to exploit people into loans with no regulations of any kind. No regulation. Greed, anger, and stupidity combined with an obsession for the materialist and here you are then, sitting in the middle of it, defenseless, helpless, and the world collapsing around you. Now, the Buddhist told us what would happen in this time that he referred to as the latter days, and he spoke of what we would have to do in order to change <coughs> the devastation building around us. And, you know, it's something that you do not hear uh, today. And, and this is what Buddha said. In order for us to resolve, we first have to reform ourselves. We have to change the way we think. We have to change uh, the kind of people we vote for. We have to change the kind of uh, 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 programs that we support. They must first reform themselves and their immediate surroundings and then gradually extend their wisdom, compassion, and life force to others. But the point that he's making here is that the change has to come first inside here. Okay? The mind has to change. It has to start feeling for the earth, for the oceans, for the animals, for nature, for life, for one another, you know. And we have been on a toot over thousands of years thinking of just defending our turf and blowing up these people and making new weapons so that we can blow up more people. And, 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 and so you can't be surprised that this kind of a thing happens. But what this is saying, <clears throat> if there's going to be a salvation for the planet and the people that live upon it, there has to be total Reform, and it's a reform or a change of your mind and my mind. So, one can only surmise that reform now is being carried out by nature since such devastation has descended upon the earth, not only in the form of this financial chaos, but in global warming. And even in global warming, the people say, well, you know, we can't do that. It'll get in the way of the economy. Well, there's no economy for it to get in the way of anymore, so we might as well go ahead and do it. 
<coughs> the idea is, if we don't reform, then we will be reformed. And that's what's happening. Let's look at a, a scripture from Revelation before we go on to the next slide. I want to show you something. Say what you just said again. I think that's really important. What is that? If we don't reform, we will be reformed. Yeah. Thank you. Revelation 18, 9. And the kings of the earth. Now, these are the Lehman Brothers guys and all these, the big shots. Who have committed, who have lived deliciously with her, shall bewail her and lament for her when they shall see the smoke of her burning. <laughs> Just don't look at all these words literally. Look at a, at a mental thing. You know, something that once was is going up in smoke, to use the expression. Standing far off for the fear of her torment, saying that great city Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour your judgment has come. And the merchants of the earth shall cry and mourn over her, for nobody buys their merchandise anymore. That great city. In one hour such great riches have come to nothing. Do you know that so far people who have their money in their 401ks in stock have lost about over $2 trillion? And the merchants of the earth cry and mourn because nobody buys their merchandise anymore. Oh, wow, I mean, you know, they're still buying to go to Walmart. Let me show you something. <coughs> General Motors and Ford may face bankruptcy. Did you ever think you'd see that? Bloomberg News. General Motors, Ford Motor, and Chrysler may be forced into bankruptcy by slowing economies and dwindling U.S. auto sales. Standard and Poor's analyst Robert Schultz said today, General Motors and Ford and Chrysler may go bankrupt. And you saying, what, what do you think is going to happen? You don't even have to think what's going to happen anymore. There it is. The kings of the earth, the merchants at the top, General Motors, Ford and Chrysler, forced into bankruptcy because just like the Bible said, what did the Bible scripture say? Nobody buys their merchandise anymore. I mean, here's a prophecy of December 21st, 2012 that we've been studying for weeks telling us that in this time we're living in great changes will come upon the earth. <coughs> and the materialists will fall. And here you look at a sign saying GM, Ford, and Chrysler may go into bankruptcy. What else do you have to hear to understand the prophecy of December 21st, 2012? It didn't come from Pachel Volta. It came from a higher source. Okay? So we were forewarned. What else do you have to hear? I don't know. The point being that the prophecy didn't have to do with the United States. It had to do with the entire world. And keeping in mind that this is a worldwide calamity. Now, I'm going to show you something. And if you don't think it's a worldwide calamity, let me show you what the president of Italy had to say. Barcelona says leaders may close the world's markets. Italian Prime Minister Silvio Barcelona said <coughs> practical leaders are discussing the idea of closing the world's financial markets while they rewrite the rules of international finance. Closing, shutting down. Wall Street and all these places shut down, close, lock the doors. What happens then? All over the world. So you see, how grave can this get? So grave that the higher light looking down upon the created beautiful earth and the people placed on it is finished. 
seeing people attacked and killed and for all of this materialist value stuff of, of bombs being made why, while people don't have necessary health care, etc. So what I want you to do is change a little bit that this is not something that is simply caused by you know, anything but greed and the powerful oppression of average persons. No, this is something that is caused by a word that we throw around a lot but never think could be used in a situation like this, and the word is God. This is caused by what we might consider God to save the planet. You know how I know that? Because if it didn't come from some structure like God or whatever you want to call it, Paco, Votan, and Buddha would have never known about it. Buddha referred to this time as the latter day. He said it would come after 2,500 years. The latter days, as Buddha said, would come upon the world now, and this change would happen. <coughs> what does the Bible say? Deuteronomy 4.30, when you are in the time of trouble and things are come upon you in the latter days, that's the Buddha part, that means now. If you turn to the Lord and be obedient to his voice, he will not forsake you nor destroy you. What? That's all right. Deuteronomy 31.29, for I know that after my death you will corrupt yourselves and evil will come upon you in the latter days. Because you will do evil in the sight of the Lord to provoke him to anger through the work of your hands. <clears throat> Both of these are saying, hey, there is going to be a lot of trouble in the latter days. In the latter days is right now in 2008. And I'll show you how we prove that. And then I have come to make you understand what shall happen to you in the latter days, for yet the vision is for many days. In other words, it's a long way off. <laughs> Turn to the Lord. Very religious sounding. How in the world could you do anything like that? Turn to yourself, because that's the secret. The kingdom is within you. I will be in them. I will be their God. I will walk in them. You have to turn within yourself and allow that light to change your mind, to change the way you think. Now, when Buddha said <clears throat> 2,500, he didn't say 2,500 years. He put it in a format of three sections like this. The existence of the Buddha 2,500 years ago and the Buddha prediction <laughs> is the former day of the law, 500 years and 500 years equals 1,000 years. The middle day of the law, 500 years and 500 years, 1,000 years. So we have 2,000 years. Okay, now remember this is made in 500 B.C. The latter day of the law 500 years, total 2,500 years right now. 2008, that's how, that's how we get to it. So here he's saying something catastrophic will happen, and Votan said the same thing. Now, we've studied not only the prophecy of Votan, it's important to consider the wisdom of the Buddha, which transcends religion and goes to the heart of, of the human psyche. <clears throat> Buddha taught that it is human beings who tie the knot which causes their predicament. But by following the new path, they can untie the knot. Buddha taught basically the same philosophy that Jesus taught. Jesus said, the kingdom of God is within you. And Buddha said it this way, but it's the same thing. <clears throat> the qualities of wisdom, courage, and compassion are latent in everyone. That means they're just lying there waiting to be awakened. It all begins with the individuals deciding to take responsibility 
for their own individual lives. And that means not following church, not following religion, not following government, but following the light within you, following that inner self. That's what he's talking about. That was the philosophy that said you reform yourself and your immediate surroundings <clears throat> and then gradually it extends out to others. And what is being spoken of here, what is meant here, is meditation. You reform yourself by opening yourself to the higher light in meditation. And as your thinking and personality changes, <laughs> you begin to see it move outward to others. So the task of reforming yourself is the decision you make to allow the light to enter within during meditation, <laughs> causing the change. I think this is the same thing that Jesus said when he, when he, when he uttered these two scriptures. <coughs> Luke 11.52, you take away the key of knowledge because you don't enter within yourself. And Luke 4.23, he said, physician, heal yourself. Okay? In other words, look inside of yourself and let yourself be healed by your willingness to sit in meditation. You can't do the change by yourself any, any more than all the king's horses and all the king's men could put Humpty Dumpty back together again because, as you see, if you've been reading the TV, Humpty Dumpty just fell off the wall. <laughs> and there's nothing anybody could do about it. By going into meditation, you simply allow this change to happen within yourself. And Buddha said this, which is so important to the times that we live in now. He said, a great revolution of character in just one single person will help achieve a change in the destiny of a nation and further will cause a change in the destiny of all mankind. A great revolution of character in one person. A change <coughs> in one person who has the ability to lead others. That was both the philosophy of Buddha and Jesus. Allow the transformation to take place within yourself, and it will spread. And, and, and what Buddha said, you know, it depends on what you allow yourself to do. And if you'll go into meditation and take this light, that will determine if you win or lose in life. And that philosophy also applies to others around the world. But you see how, <clears throat> with what we're going through now, how the change is forced on us. If we don't do it ourselves, it'll be done for us. You have the materialistic financial institutions teetering on total collapse because each action has an opposite and equal reaction. If you go to the extreme right, as we did, and forsake all regulation, you will then wind up having to go to the extreme left and nationalizing and socializing the same institutions that you didn't want to regulate. Oh, we don't want to regulate these. Okay, now you've got to buy them. And that's where the Buddha <coughs> describes to us what is happening now. He says... You struggle hard to survive. Everything depends on you as to whether or not you attain happiness. A human being is destined to a life of great suffering if he is weak and vulnerable to his external surroundings. And we all are, aren't we? We all are. That's the key to survival in this time leading up to December 21st, 2012. If our direction comes from the kings of the earth, the politicians, and, 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 and the, the financial people, instead of the higher light in meditation, then we are destined to a life of great suffering. 
And that is why meditation is so extremely important. Our direction and our mind change has to come from within ourselves. So we can't allow our minds to be open to the dependency on materialist people. Uh, all of these lawyers and stockbrokers and politicians and all of this stuff. Rising above all of this is the key. And this is what the Bible meant when it said this. <clears throat> it said in Proverbs 15:24, The way of life is above to the wise that he may depart from the hell beneath. What a great line that is. And the way of life is above means it comes from the connection to the higher realms within yourself, where you separate from thought, which are of the lower. And then in Ecclesiastes 7.29, it's great too. God has made man upright, but man has sought out many inventions. Oh, this must be wrong. <clears throat> we can't live like this. We have to do this. You have to become this religion or that religion or this political party or that political party. You got to join this and you got to do all of these things because you got to figure out what to do and how to do it and save everything. And all you do is screw everything up. Until that light comes within and just that it has changed the financial institutions of the world. You know what's so terrific about this? If they all go bankrupt, they're not going to be able to make any bombs. That won't be no money. <laughs> it's the way you stop the wars. Cut off the funds. And that's what's happening. Call it religion. Call it whatever you wish. We have tried to improve our state in life by joining this or doing what somebody says instead of finding that special nature light within us. Because you can't invent new ways to happiness. It's within you. And you have to go within yourself in meditation to allow it to come to life. Buddha makes it clear, and this is important to know, our problems relate directly to our own strength. When we are weak, our problems seem large. When we are strong, our problems seem small. In other words, it depends on how we feel. If you're in a bad mood, a problem can be the cause of chaos. If you're in a good mood, you can usually minimize the problem. But it depends on how we receive everything. You know, generally, what do we do? Well, we sit around and we say, well, you know, nothing we can do about it. Nothing I can do about it. Everything's screwed up. <coughs> I don't know what we can do. I have absolutely no control over what's going on. And that's where you're at. You don't have any control over this. If you've got money in the stock market and the collapse wants to take it all, you could check in one day and you got $50,000 in there, and tomorrow you check in, you get 75 cents. And you, nothing you can do about it. But now, it's different. It's not you and me sitting around saying, oh, there's nothing we can do about this. It's the big shots. It's, it's all of the financial wizards and the politicians saying, oh, what can everything, nothing we can do. We tried everything. It doesn't work. So it certainly appears that what is going on in this cataclysmic event is beyond anyone's control to resolve. And when I understand the predictions of Buddha and Votan, and I see them as you see them unfolding right in front of our eyes, I also have to consider the signs in the sky. Another thing that people have not understood and been scared away from by this religious nonsense. The Bible said, let there be lights in the heavens and let them be for signs. When I look for a sign that is obviously given to life existing in this universe, 
my attention immediately comes to this one. No, go back. You see this? This is the double helix. This is the sign of DNA in the sky. This is the sign of life. Human life, animal life, it's the double helix. And it is up there. And especially, we are able to see it at this time. There is a message, you see. There is a message from the higher addressed to all life. And how much clearer could it be than to see the DNA strand in the sky? And what is that which appears as interesting lines? And I'll show you what it is. The double helix nebula. And that's the double helix DNA, and that's it in the sky. Oh, you know, you can have anything blow up there and blow up there, but look, you know, and everything, it's DNA. What? The Bible said, let there be lights in heaven and let them be for sign. I want to show you what Professor Mark Morris of UCLA said about this. He said, we see two intertwining strands wrapped around each other as in a DNA molecule. Said Mark Morris, a UCLA professor of physics and astronomy and lead author. <laughs> Nobody has ever seen anything like that before in the cosmic realm. And when are we able to see it? Just a few years before 2012. Most nebulae are either spiral galaxy full of stars or formless amorphous conglomerations of dust and gas. What we see here indicates a high degree of order. That means somebody did it. Because you couldn't, you can't get things to blow up and go like that. The last line is the sign to all of us. See, go back to the scriptures, let there be lights in the heavens and let them be for signs. Now go to that last line. Here's the sign. What we see indicates a high degree of order, a higher light. You want to call it the God light. Making its appearance at a time <clears throat> when all the world is trying to figure out what's going on and what they, can change, what they can do to change what's going on. Let's consider this in the light of all changes and predictions of three uh, up to come. What is DNA made of? It's called adenine. A-D-E-N-I-N-E. -E. What's that? Adenine is one of the most important organic molecules for life as we know it today. It's an integral part of DNA, RNA, and ATP DNA. As you might know, that's the genetic code used for cellular life on Earth. It is through the precise inheritance of an organism's DNA from its parent that the traits of an organism are passed on. In other words, the DNA from the parents enter the DNA of the child. But now we're talking about something different. We're talking about the DNA of God entering the DNA of life on Earth. Now put that together with the Votan prophecy of the old world passing away and the new world being born in less than four years. That, that's pretty good. Notice the line that says, through a precise inheritance of an organism's DNA from its parent, the traits of the organism are passed on. Let's look again. 
and look your DNA passing on to other generation God's DNA passing on to you and it appears right at the spot when both Buddha and Votan Bible said the latter days are here we have less than four years to go and the catastrophic change has come upon the earth and the kings of the earth and the merchants of the earth and it's what I think I have said years and years when you go to clean out a room it is good for everything in the room except the dirt and this is the cleansing I am convinced no doubt in my mind I could not in the life of me suggest that I could ever experience or see things like we're seeing now and not realize that this is a direct intervention so is what we are experiencing now the inheritance that is not of the material and does this extend to the signs of Buddha and Votan of the birth of the new world a new mind that will flow in harmony with nature and all life thank you for uh, being with us and we'll see you soon bye bye okay.